So today we're going to look at the Nordic Semiconductor Terminology and this is pretty crucial if you're a beginner and you want to continue a older project or you want to get started with a newer project um, it can be confusing on what the terminology is because they completely changed how everything works. Uh, Nordic is a company that makes Bluetooth low energy chips primarily in a wide array of packages and sizes and functionality. And because of this wider range of chips, they recently changed how they support their software. Okay, so and the biggest change they did was when it comes to operating systems. Originally, uh, software made before around 2020 used bare metal with this software device layer, which was essentially just drivers that were saved to the flash. This was completely OS agnostic, so you could run whatever OS or no OS at all. It was up to you as the user. Now what they've opted to do is use this thing called Zephyr, which is an RTOS or real-time operating system. So it's a very minimalistic operating system that fits onto the chip. And this allowed the Nordic team to um, easier manage the code uh, and allow users to port their code to different versions of the chip more easily. And what this actually looks like on the chip, on the flash, looks something like this. So you'd have your bootloader, your app data, your application, and then you'd have the software device layer. And this was something you would load onto your device. Or it would even be, if you bought a device, it would be preloaded. And when you did an upgrade, you would upgrade just the application, just this part. And what would happen is, if you wrote your application for a different SDK level, you wouldn't have the drivers on it because you'd have to have your SD, your soft devices have the same version as your applications. And the same with the bootloader. You had to have all these things in sync with uh, your proper SDK version. So now it's slightly simplified. You just have your bootloader, your app data, and then your application. The application and the software device have been merged together. They are now one big package. Okay, so now when it comes to this SDK, what does it actually look like if you want to get started? So, so these are the supported chips, and then you would find the software device you actually need to use. So each of these software devices supports a certain amount of chips and has a certain amount of functionality that are pre-baked into it. So what you'd have to do is you'd find the software package with a specific subset of functionality you want and then you would use that. And this would be a file that you would flash onto the device. Okay. And now what we have is we have this NRF Connect F SDK. And what this is, it's this is an example of a specific uh, use case for a mouse, but what we have is the Zephyr layer, which is our OS, and then there's a higher level, this Nordic uh, Connect SDK that sits on top of it and abstracts many of the more complicated parts of the Bluetooth and allows you to build on top of that. Now, if you're very familiar with the soft device structure, you can still use the soft device controller for your Bluetooth. This soft controller is basically, the soft device controller is basically uh, low level Bluetooth drivers that you can use with Zephyr if you feel like it. Uh, but Zephyr already has Bluetooth drivers built into it that are managed by Nordic. But if you like the older style of uh, coding, you can still theoretically use those. Okay. So now when it comes to devices, you have uh, NRF 5.1s and NRF 5.2s. And there'll never be another device supported with this, with this older SDK. 
Um, so, and the current Zephyr OS supports almost all devices, except for a few of the NRF 5.1 devices. So this is the way that they're moving forward, and all current development by Nordic is going to basically be on this, while this is in um, maintenance mode. When it comes to bootloaders, Nordic basically had their own software suite for their own custom bootloaders. Well, they moved to MCU boot. So this has the advantage of being a more universal type of uh, bootloader than their own custom priority thing. But they both had the option of doing secure or open bootloaders, which means that you can either have your bootloader updating software be completely open so whatever someone pushes to it as long as it's valid it will flash to the device with a secure bootloader the package would have to be signed with a specific key to be valid all right so now use cases so if you're working with a legacy product or you're using one of these older nrf 51 chips then you'll probably want to stick with this NRF SDK. Uh, it seems to be trouble to migrate over. So until you, until you need to move over, it seems to be, it seems to be normal just to stick with the SDK. Some people are questioning the performance uh, values of moving to an operating system, even if it is a real time operating system. And, in theory, you will probably get slightly better performance. Uh, but if properly optimized, it seems to be not as crucial. This is done by Nordic, so take that with a grain of salt. But if properly optimized, you can get somewhere close to the standard SDK. Or you can get pretty close to the older SDK with the Connect SDK. So basically, this will require a new set of skills from the previous SDK to properly get it to work up to the same level or around the same level. So which leads to my final result is if you're creating a new project of any sort, it's probably best to stick with the new NRF SDK or you can use the bare bones Zephyr if you feel inclined to. But going forward, you're going to uh, yeah. Going forward, it's best to you know use the latest, uh, the latest supported software because if you need to migrate to a newer chip, this will be the route that Nordic is going. And that's all I have for this presentation. I hope it's explained, or some of the weird terminology.